Hey everybody, how you doing? This is Benny Mena with another episode of Off Stage, the show where we get to know a little bit about my comics, get to know a little bit what happens off stage. And today my guest is the beautiful Lulu Vika. Lulu, how you doing today? Fabulous, baby. There you go again with the baby, always baby. <laughs> So uh, we talked about this very recently. Yes. Uh, the, the reason you say the word baby the is because you're yes. horrible with names. I am you're horrible like with names. So I was making love to this guy one time and I called him by a different name. So after that, I was like, oh no, baby, this is it. So after that, I called everybody baby, just in case. How old were you when this happened? Were you like a teenager? Oh. Were you already an adult? Yes, I was about uh, 21 years old. Oh, so you were young, it happens. Yeah, it happens. You so you, you were uh, very promiscuous. Uh, well, you know, the, uh, uh, Akumi. <laughs> Akumi? <laughs> You got, uh, I, you know. You got around back in the day. Yeah, you know, I wasn't a saint. I wasn't a saint, you know. It's funny because I've known you, in, 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 uh, ever since I've known you, you've been married, and I can't picture you like that, like, at all. Oh, my gosh. Like, at all. Yeah, no, so what happened was I was dating this guy, you know. I, I know you don't know this about me. I, used to, I was a dancer, okay. a real dancer, not a strip dancer, stuck in a ball. No, baby, no. We took... A, hours and hours of ballet classes, jazz classes, and I traveled the world mm -hmm. dancing, and I was a specialty act. I used to do acrobatics, uh, like the ice skaters do, you know, on the mm -hmm. ice, but without the ice, and I used to fly through the air. Oh, wow. So my dance partner, for 36 years, okay, that oh, we danced how together. How old were you when you started? I started at 15 years old. Wow. So uh, we danced together our whole life, uh, and we were lovers. Okay. But he was a devil. I mean, really? he, oh my God, yes. He went to bed with everybody. And I was like, oh no, I'm. But okay, maybe he went to bed with everybody, but did he ever call you by a different name? No, he didn't. Ah, ah you man. Oh, you Hey, man. you know, I gotta stick up on my own. <laughs> yeah, no, he did not. But you see, he was used to it, but I wasn't. Ah, so, okay. That's what happened. So, yeah, so, um, yeah. So, but we uh, we stay friends after we broke up. So is that and why you stopped we, dancing? Because you we broke up. Danced. No, I stopped dancing for two reasons. Number one, I cracked my sternum twice. Falling. Because yeah, I was I was flying through the air, mm -hmm. and he caught me wrong. He I hit his knee with my chest in one of those flips Ooh. that I used to do. Mm -hmm. That was one of the reasons I wanted to change careers. And number two, um, my little sister uh, contracted HIV. And uh, I wanted to promote safe sex. And that was my reason why I wanted to speak on stage. Because dancing, you have the body language and all of that. But, you know, I wanted to verbalize and say people have safe sex. That's why I closed my show saying, go home, have safe sex, think of me. Ah, uh, okay. You know what I mean? So, yeah, and I used to give away condoms during my set and everything. Oh, okay, so you started dancing, you know, you danced for 36 years, same guy, your sister got HIV, you wanted to do uh, a, voice, uh, a voice about HIV. So did you go f from dancing to comedy or from dancing to acting? From dancing to comedy first. Wow, The okay. acting, while I was dancing, I always did like a little movie here, a little movie over there, you know. In Puerto Rico, we used to do sketches on all the TV shows because I did all the TV shows in Puerto Rico that you can imagine. I started dancing at 14 in Puerto right. Rico. And uh, we, we work with everybody, Sandro, Rafael, uh, uh, um, uh, Iglesias. Uh, I mean, everybody that came to Puerto Rico, we danced with them. Oh, wow, okay. Yeah, it was wonderful. Then... Um, so you guys were the dance crew. Oh yeah, we were, baby. And then I started choreographing, and okay. I choreographed for one of the biggest stars, which was Iris Chacon. <laughs> <laughs> I remember, Iris Chacon. I Iris Chacon. Chacon. Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah. If, if yeah. you guys don't know what it is, it's basically like a... Um, Madonna de Latina Madonna. Yeah, well, Latina Madonna slash Dolly Parton, because she, uh, oh, she was very uh, happy, very talented. That's what it is, and, yeah. And Big hair. Yeah, big hair, and yeah. Big hair, yeah. So Iris Chacon, man, she was hot. She yeah, was, I remember as a kid. I mean, she, I mean, she is a, uh, como se dice, una... Icon. Sí. She's an icon, yeah. Sí, sí. Y este, yo bailaba con ella, I used to dance with her, and then I became her choreographer. And okay. then, um, you know, and then after that, I was like, I did everything I could do in Puerto Rico, and I wanted to grow 
Mm -hmm. And then I was uh, working on this American show at the San Juan Hotel, and I met this guy, and that's when I started dancing with my partner. Okay, but you were only, you were, how old when you met him? Um, when I met him, I was, uh, I was going to be 20. Oh, okay. Yeah, I was going to be 20. So, um, and then I met him, and then after that, we left Puerto Rico. We went all over Europe. We went to Germany. We went to Switzerland. We went to Paris. We went to wow. Paris. We went to, uh, everywhere. So you lived a life. Yes, baby. Nice. Twice. Wow. As a dancer and as a comedian now. Wow. And when everybody said, oh, still you guys to go to Europe, y'all. You guys want to book me to go to Europe, let me know. Take it, take it. <laughs> I'm funny. <laughs> he is very funny. You are very funny. Thank you. Appreciate that. I love that. And you're a good, beautiful person, too. Oh, you know? thank you. And every time we do shows together, after he leaves the stage, I always go, yeah, yeah, he's fuckable. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. Not as much now. I gained some weight. You know, I'm still trying to lose the baby weight. You know, three and a half years later. But but you know, I, I try. I try. You gotta do like me, baby. Lots, yeah. Lots of tuna. Well, so let sorry. me ask you this, because you know, as a man, as a male comic, not a man comic, a male comic. You know, as a comic in general, we all go through BS, whatever. But I I can't imagine you know what women must go through, dealing with bookers, other comics, or just you know. People in the audience after the show, they think you're hot, you know, and they're really pushy. So, was was that a, like a, a, a thing you had to deal with, or you didn't really experience that? I ex I still experiencing that. Um, really? Oh yeah. There's a lot of guys that you know approach me after shows, um, but you know what? Audience members. Though. Audience members. Okay. Um, no bookers, no club owners, no. Uh, club owners, lay no. They know I'm married, and I have always had a partner, even in the in the dance world. And now as a comedian, I've been married for 23 years, mm -hmm. and I marry a comedian, which right. I was known on the business by the club owners here in okay. Los Angeles. Um, yes, I, I know your husband, Dave. So give a shout out to your husband. Yes, my baby. I love my husband. I adore my husband till he pisses me off. But that's, that's another story. But anyway, <laughs> um, you know. Um, I just have this way of dealing with stuff like this. Mm -hmm. that I have always laughed about it. I always, <laughs> you know, it's a fake laugh, but that's how I just go. Phew. You get thick skin. Yes, baby. And it have never affected me. Have I had a couple of situations? They have been with a gun and everything that the guy wanted to force me. Yes, with oh, gun really? and everything. With a gun. With a gun. Audience member. Yes. Well, no. That one was a producer of a show I did downtown like in Los Angeles. Comedy or dancing? Dancing. Okay. Wow. Dancing. This is from and the dancing world. Oh, yeah. Tell me about that. How did you get away from that situation? Oh gosh, really? Can I? Do Wait, I have, can you? I do? Yeah. I mean, well. Or I, you had sex with the guy? I don't know what it is. I didn't get. I didn't have sex. You know, I'm like uh, you know Bill Clinton. I didn't. Um, in, in hell. Uh, <laughs> okay, so I'm gonna tell you, and if you are out there looking at me, fucker, can I do that? Yeah. Okay. Hey, me casa su casa. So anyway, I did it. So okay, so what happened was I do this show at the Mayan Theater downtown. I know them. I used to go there back in the day. Yes. When so I was young. I was um, hired to do this dance uh, behind a screen, which was the um, shadow dance which is okay. very sensual and you know and I loved that because I was all posing and then the dancing and the legs and the body and all of this blah 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 so anyway I finished the show and this guy's like crazy about me he's like a totally in love with me and he's a producer of the show yes and then he goes um we are going to go eat something would you like to come with us to have breakfast I was kind of new in town because I never wanted to live in Los Angeles. I used to live in Las Vegas for 12 years. Oh, wow, okay. So I have come here, and I, I was doing this show. So then um, he goes, uh, we're going to go eat something. And I should have known better, because my mom always told me, first of all, don't go late at night with somebody you don't know. Right. Okay. And it was just you two? No. That's why I went. There were other people, uh, musicians and audience members from the party and you know there was a, a, a group 
So then after that, oh, he said, leave your car here. Call me my car. Ah. Right? Uh -huh. so then, uh -huh. <laughs> I fell for it. So then after the breakfast, everybody eating and having a lot of fun, he goes, I got to give a ride to my friend, to his house. So we get there, and I guess this guy was going to go with this other girl. And when I and then he goes, uh, let's go in for a second, and then we go into this place, and it was a room, mm. and there I was stuck in this room with this guy, and I have no idea where I was. I didn't know how to get back to my car, right, right, because I was new in town, you know, no no GPS on that time. Yeah. And uh, maybe map question that time. Uh, baby, I have no idea. I was like, at the oh, Thomas guy, baby. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> So anyway, I'm Thomas even, guy. That's what I used to. Old school people know what I'm talking about. The, Thomas guy, the baby. Thomas guy. I didn't even knew about those. Oh really? I live by it. Oh my god. So anyway, so then um, there we were, and he's like, "We're here, and we're gonna have sex." And I was like, Just "No, like we're that. not. No, we're not." And I have to spend the night there. Oh yeah, and I slept with him in that same bed and everything. And uh, but I didn't have sex with him. And then in the morning, he pull out the gun? and then in the morning he said, uh, "Look, just take this gun, and if I do anything that you don't want me to do, you can." Oh, just, he gave you the he gun. He gave me the gun, and you can shoot me or whatever, whatever. And I was like, I don't need this, whatever. And he goes, "Well, and then we're gonna have sex, or we're not gonna have sex." And then he started getting like weird. Oh, wow. So I was like, uh, jump in the shower, and uh, I took care of him. Like a hand job? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> so, hey, so, so I'm not going to have, but I'll give you a hand job. I got a hand job, but I'm getting out of here alive, baby. Oh, no, he got, he got weird. He got weird. He got weird. So but, I was like, but well, you gave him a hand job. <laughs> but what did you want me to do? I had to save my life. You didn't like go look for the other girl and the guy? Like, hey, you know, this guy's crazy or anything? He didn't let me get out of the, the room. He had a gun. After he gave me the gun and I said, I don't need this gun. And then he took the gun back. And then he's like, are we going to have sex or not? And then he started getting weird. And I was wow. trapped in this room with this guy with a gun. What, what did the guy look like that he had to use a gun? Yeah, he, yeah. I know guns. I knew how to use the gun. You know, what I'm saying is, like, uh, Tama Fe, was he ugly? Or, I mean, no, he was, was not, he was not ugly. He was really cute. He was really But he cute. needed a gun to convince you. I, uh, yeah. Wow. I mean, you know. I wish someone but, used hey, to use gun. <laughs> my fault. Yeah, you went with him, yeah. What am I doing with a stranger after one o'clock in the morning, you know? Well, it's not your myself. fault he pulled out a gun. You thought you were gonna go eat and he did the whole let me get my you know. But, you know, uh <laughs> I don't think you gotta give him a hand job, but. <laughs> oh, really? You take my position, Buster. <laughs> you know, lately I've been taking my your position a lot. You know, this guy hand has a gun, and this hand does the hand job. <laughs> Anyways. No, uh, I mean, yeah, no, I felt trapped. I felt trapped, and you know. No, I'm pretty sure you were 21. It's scary. It's scary. It, it was very scary. It was scary, but I didn't act scared. So, I just act like I was so tough. And was yeah. this a? Uh, but he was cute. Was this like a one-time show? You had to see him again, or that was it? No, I never answered his phone call ever again. Oh, he tried to call you? Of course. Wow. And after that, he wanted to go out with me and everything. Wow. Did you tell him, like, hey, leave me the F alone? And then we just didn't answer. No, I didn't answer. Nah, that's crazy. See, that's what I'm saying. That doesn't happen to guys. You know, you know. <laughs> as much as we want it to happen to us, it, does, it doesn't happen to us. So that was, that was uh, your dancing experience. In comedy, has anything like that happened in comedy? And comedy and comedy. You ever like when you start doing comedy, you ever been out with like a bigger uh, male comic, you know, headliner and you're the opener, anything like that? Oh, well, when I, in comedy, you know, I have had a lot of guys uh, before I met my husband and uh, when I was living in Utah and I was working at this comedy club, uh, the, the comedy circuit. Um, owned by my dance partner after we broke up. We're still friends. Wait, still he opened up a comedy club? Yes, just for me. Oh, really? Yes. Oh, yes. wow. Oh, he was a wonderful guy. He was a wonderful guy. Um, and, I uh, love a devil. Yeah. <laughs> you know, he was, we were just so young, you know what I mean? Yeah. Um, but, um, no, I, when I was working there at the comedy circuit, and uh, I used to help with the club, and I used to... Uh, carried the comedians around in my car. Mm -hmm. All the comedians wanted to get on my pants, you know. 
And I was just, and I was just a dancer. I was just studying the comedy thing. And so, they would come over to my apartment, help me write jokes, and then they would come on to me. But nobody ever disrespected me. It was just all just flirting, yeah. Yeah, you know. yeah. The comments. I loved that part, the flirting part. Oh. So, how did you meet your husband? How, how did he become the one? Oh well, I was working at the Comedy Circle. I come to dance with my partner. And uh, the show was, was like a Vegas style show. It was like okay. two headliners, uh, I mean, opening act, sorry, opening act and the headliner. And my dance partner and I will dance in between. Okay, you're the intermission act. Yes. So I come to my work and there were, there were two dressing rooms, one for the comedians and one for my partner and I. So when I come in, he is in my dressing room. Your husband? My husband, which I, you know, I didn't know him yet. And I, I, he was fixing his hair, he had long hair, and uh, he was fixing his hair, looking at himself in the mirror, and I said, excuse me, but you are in my dressing room. And when he looked at me and he said, I'm sorry, I didn't know, I heard this voice that says, husband. Really? So like that first, love at first sight? Te lo juro. That's exactly how it went. And I went, oh, I'm gonna marry this guy. But I acted like nothing, you know. Wow. And then he goes, oh, I'm sorry, you know, and then I go, oh, okay. He goes, I was just fixing my hair. I said, you just need some hairspray. And I took the hairspray and I sprayed his hair and then he took his guitar. <laughs> what is it, 1980 what? <laughs> yeah, I won it. Yeah, 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 yeah the, the 80s look. <laughs> <laughs> and he was like, you know, guys with hairspray, they, he hated it. And then, and then he went to his dressing room, and then um, I went to, I sat on my dressing room, and I just knew that I was gonna marry this guy. And then we became friends, and then there was a fire, like a couple of days later. So he, wait, he was there for a week? Yeah, he was there for a whole okay. week. Okay. And then a couple of days later, he, I was leaving home, and I see this fire across the street, and I ran back in, and the only one back there was him. And I was like, Please, you gotta help me, you gotta help me, there's a fire, please, there's a fire. And he's like, what, what, what's going on? You know, and my husband, you guys gotta meet my husband. He has three speed, slow, more slow, and stop. And he just sits there <laughs> like that, you know, and he goes, huh, what's going on? And I go, there's a fire, you gotta help me. And he's like, where's the fire? <laughs> and I'm like, wow. come with me, come on. And I pulled him over, and we went there, and we found a hose, and we put the fire out. The, the fire was a, what, a business, a house? Or it was it? a house, and it was a shed. They it was across from the fire, club? And it was across the street from the club. And then after that, we were just laughing, hysterical, both of us, and then we became friends. And we were friends for a year. And he pulled the gun out. Oh, and I, <laughs> are we gonna have sex or, no. We were friends for a whole year. And I never let him know that I liked him. And I didn't know that he liked me, but he was coming and watching my dance every time. Wow. And then, Sam Kennison. You know Sam, uh, remember Sam Kennison? Yeah, that, that's the reason I became a comic. Really? Yeah, I saw him do what he did on TV, and I was all like, yo, Sam Kennison was the man to me, all right? Richard Pryor's God, George Carlin, but Sam Kennison to me was like the man, all right? Well, uh, uh, I loved watching him. Oh my God, guess what? I opened for him. No way. In Salt Lake City, Utah, in front of 2,500 people, it was packed. And I think I, I am like the only woman that ever wow. opened for him, I think. And then my husband was working, at, he wasn't my husband yet. We haven't even started dating yet. Mm -hmm. So he was working at the club and I went to him and I said, you gotta help me, you gotta help me <laughs> again. And he goes, what's wrong? Another what's fire? going on? Yeah. And they say, I had to open for Sam Kennison and I only have 10 minutes. And he's like, what do you mean? I said, I need to do a half an hour. Oh, so, you were featuring for Sam Kennison. You weren't opening. You were featuring. Yes, baby. Wow. So he helped me wow, come up with a amazing. half hour material. He directed me. He wrote jokes for me. And then um, we spent like three days together, a day and night, doing this. And then I went and I killed, and I recorded it. And then after the show, he came over to look at it. And um, and then after that, we started kissing and hugging. And then I said, oh, you gotta go. And he goes, what do you mean? Uh, and I said, you, you gotta go. The fun you. And then I watched him get to his apartment and I called him up when he got there. And I said, talk daddy to me. Uh. And then we started going out. 
and we're married. I would have been like, shut up, tease. <laughs> oh, that's an awesome story. All right, cool. Well, we're going to take a little break, pay some bills, and we're going to be back with Ludo Vika. Hey guys, it's Ellie here. I am a singer and an actress. You guys can find all of my recent commercials and all the recent videos on all my social media, YouTube, Instagram, and Facebook. You guys can find me on Ellie and Ellie. You guys can listen to all of this on BTV, i3, and LDU Fonico Radio. If you don't want to fall immediately and immutably into love, look away. If you don't want to find yourself suddenly discontented, disconcerted, distracted, look away. If you don't want to be held against your will or bound to something, anything, like heat or want or hurt. If you don't want even a glimpse at where you always secretly suspected your life could lead. If you don't want to be seduced, then please, please, look away. Hi, I'm Jesse Martin. Join us every Tuesday from 5 to 6 on the Legacy Direct Show, where we have different guests and talk about different topics. Get to learn more about our friends right here on LP and Bonico Radio. Don't miss it. When you look for things, when you search the polished showrooms, the markets, the runway shows, you are looking for me. Beyond luxury and status, beyond capability and utility, you are looking for me. And when you dream, when you dream of an SUV existing far beyond the ordinary, an SUV steeped in performance, infused with passion, artistic beyond description. You unknowingly dream of me. I am the end of your search, your drive, your dream. I am what you live for. I am the Alfa Romeo Stelvio, the first sport utility vehicle created by Alfa Romeo. back here off stage with my special guest Ludovica and she's my special guest because uh, she's actually my first female guest and uh, because uh, you're my first female guest we change sets we normally have a desk and we're using this nice beautiful, this beautiful dirty place. sofa yeah <laughs> so I can feel like a Hollywood yeah star. We, can, we, can, we can feel like you know like in, in, in TV when we watch TV on the talk shows and stuff I love maybe it. should have been 
divided, but this is kind of cool. It looks so really cool. It's comfortable, right? It's comfortable. It's comfortable. I'm very comfortable. I believe yes. it. It's, it's, no, I like the desk a lot, but this is a lot uh, more comfortable, so Thank I feel more you. at home. Thank you, baby. I feel more comfortable here. All right, cool. So listen, um, I've known you 15 years. We you know we talked a little bit about uh, how you met your husband and how you know you were hoish back in the day, but you were dancing <laughs> and stuff like that. But uh, uh, you're actually a very funny comic. You're uh, very high energy, and you get the crowd involved. You actually use the crowd in some of your jokes. So uh, I know you said when you opened up for, or you featured for Sam Kennison, your husband helped you write jokes. But since then, does he still help you write jokes, or you write your own material now, or yes. what's going on? No, he is the writer. I mean, I can write one or two jokes here and there, but he is a great writer. He writes songs, he writes movies, and he's still writing my jokes about him. Yeah, okay. You know, which is funny because a lot of people look at me sometimes when I say things, they're like, uh, and I'm like, my husband wrote that. <laughs> you right. know, so. But do you, do you, like, okay, out of your set that you have right now, uh-huh. how, how much percentage, percentage of it did he write and how much did you write? Oh my God, he's wrote like uh, 85%. Wow, really? Yes. I, oh, can, yeah. I, can, <laughs> I can just yes. imagine trying to think of a joke for you, okay? I'm a woman from the Dominican with a very heavy accent. How am I going to say this? You know. <laughs> he, he writes on my accent. Wow. He writes on my accent. That's By the way, like like we have a translator here in case you know you say something we don't that's understand. <laughs> you know. So and then uh, um. That happens with Siri all the time. Yeah. So uh, oh, we're gonna do a fundraiser GoFundMe page right here at the LDO Phonico Radio for Ludovica. We want to get her hooked on phonics so she can start speaking better. <laughs> <laughs> oh. <laughs> no, but seriously, let's take a serious note here. Talking about GoFundMe, I do have a GoFundMe page for my brother-in-law, Carmelo Diaz, who is uh, an ALS patient. He's the longest ALS patient living right now. And uh, I had to take him out of Puerto Rico because we were there okay. on the hurricane. We were stuck. He was dying, you know, and um, thank God I was able to find this team. It's called Team Gleason. They helped me get him out of the island, and they're in Louisiana right now, and there's a GoFundMe page for them. It's Hurricane Survivor, Hurricane ALS, Carmelo Diaz. I'm sorry. So it's Hurricane, Hurricane ALS, ALS, Carmelo Diaz. Carmelo it's a Diaz. GoFundMe page. Go there, a dollar, two dollar, five, twenty, fifty, a thousand. It doesn't matter, baby. Everything helps. Love you for that. God bless you. All right. Well, hopefully we get some money for you. But uh, speaking of the hurricane, uh, I saw your postings on Facebook. You were there during the hurricane. Describe that scary scenario. Whoa, baby. Whoa. Uh, it was the scariest, scariest thing. No, no, scariest is good. Scariest. 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 <laughs> That's good. That is good, yeah. It's okay. It was okay, yeah. <laughs> it was horrible. It was horrible. I can, I can, you know, I can't it imagine. I mean, you know. The noises, the, the rain, nonstop rain, the wind. You didn't know if your roof was going to blow away, if if you were okay. And being in the situation that I was with, uh, my mother had just passed away, like, days before this which is the reason you were there that's the reason why i was in puerto rico and uh which is it was painful on his own i mean i I was like freaking out about that but having to deal with the hurricane and my brother-in-law situation to help my sister to keep him alive i kind of you forget about the pain of my mom because i had to survive myself and help other people to survive um it was horrible. It was horrible. We were in the house four days without not being able to get out. I finally was able to get out. Did you have food for four days? Oh yeah, I had to get everything, everything. So you guys knew it was coming and you got provisions? Yes, they did tell us it was coming. And I gotta tell you something, if you if you wanna stalk, if you wanna be stuck uh, waiting for a hurricane, please pray there is there are no Puerto Ricans, the people stuck with you, because <laughs> they don't prepare. They just go, oh, hurricanes, yeah, they come and go. No, baby. I'm like freaking out, going, we need matches, we need food, we need water, we need plastic bags, we need gloves, with flashlights, we need everything. I had uh, first aid kits, you know, that I went and bought, you know. They're like, what are you buying that for? I didn't know they sold first aid kits. I, I, I bought a first aid kit, <laughs> but I never bought a first aid kit. So tell me, how, how big are the kids? <laughs> 
know, the band-aids and the... You know, <laughs> <laughs> it's I got a message with comics. I got a message. I've it. been out of the country for a while, you guys. I was in Florida. You know. So, so anyway, so uh, so um, so yeah, I had to prepare, and they were just looking at me like, "What are you doing?" So okay, so over here, the news said that you know the electricity went out. Is it throughout the whole island or? Oh yes. So no power. No power, no gasoline, and then I happened to buy the last. Um, Planta, como se dice eso, generator that was left in the island. It was God. God was having me there to be able to keep this guy alive. Okay? Because I went to Home Depot to get a cord to fix the generator that we already had that was broken. And I never knew that we were not going to be able to fix it. And then the lady said, I don't have the cable, but I have one generator left. And after this, we're going to close, and there's no more generators on the whole island. Oh, you got lucky. He got wow. lucky. He got lucky. No, but I mean, well, well, yeah, he got lucky. But I mean, the fact that, you know, she's looking for a cord, and she's, she's having, oh, I don't have that cord, but I have a generator. A generator. You That's want amazing. it. And yeah. it's the last one. And I was like, uh, do I want it? She goes, lady, we're closing. And I was like, uh, okay, give it to me. Yeah. And I'm walking with this in my hand, and I'm going, $800, generator, do I need it? Do I get it? I didn't come here to look for this. And then uh, they're going, we're closing. I said, okay, uh, uh, I need the generator. And I just took it with me. Wow. And then I had to find gasoline to keep it going, of course. Wow. So I was in line for nine hours, Damn. waiting to buy $15 worth of gas. Nine hours every day for I don't know how long. That's crazy. And some people down there, they don't know how to help. They don't know no, how to no, help. You know, <clears throat> Yeah. I know, I know, like, you know, I, uh, I didn't go to a hurricane, but I went to the L.A. riots. And even though, you know, people were looting and stuff like that, some people uh, were going through some hard times, you know, um, like, they're, they're, they're like, like, shop owners, their, their shop got, uh, you know, vandals, lies and stuff like that, got looted. And I was always the type, type of guy that, you know, I'm, I'm willing to help. But you'd be surprised how many people, when there's a, some kind of disaster, they take advantage. Oh, yeah. People are greedy and some people are evil and it, it's sad. It's really sad. It's I mean, really sad. Yeah, and, I you mean, know. This guy from the gas station, I had a picture of my brother-in-law connected with a tube coming out of his thing because he's connected to the electricity. And I'm showing this picture to him going, I need gas to keep this man alive. We don't care. Everybody has a story. I'm like, wow. what? Thank God for my um, next, uh, uh, next door neighbors, our whole street. Uh, um, this kid that grew up with me um, when I was in Puerto Rico, I was little, uh, they helped us, you know. I mean, it, there were some people that really did help, and then there was the people that they take advantage. They take advantage, and they don't know how to help, and they, I don't care. I'm like, but I have a picture. This is him. I don't care. Everybody has a story. I'm like, oh, oh my God. You know, okay, look, I understand that was messed up, but at the same time, how many times have you been like, uh, uh, I used to take the metro, I used to work in downtown LA, and people, guys or girls would come, come in with signs saying, you know, I'm trying to raise money for a, a funeral, family member just died, whatever. And then was right. Yeah, and then, and then, you know, like, next month they're there, I'm like, well, when's the funeral? <laughs> I gave you money last month. You know, so I understand that you needed it, but at the same time, when, when they, they have the same mentality, yeah. Somebody's trying to take advantage, you know, somebody's yeah. trying to cut in line, somebody, you know, and, and, and it's, it's sad, it's, it's sad that, you know, we got to go through that, you know, because people, you know, they lie, they lie about stuff, yeah, you know, they cry I wolf, know. and, and when they really need it, you or know. Or don't you hate it when you go and you buy them some food, and they look at the food and go, I didn't ask for this. Oh, yeah. I want to shove it up, you know, where, yeah. I got yeah. that. Yeah, but, but my, my point is, now you know why probably they were like, everybody has a story, you know, and uh, I know it's yeah. messed up, but, you yeah. know, because, you know. Yeah. Everybody does have a story. Yeah, it's true. You know, and then uh, um, yeah. I don't want to get into the homeless because you know I'm from LA and, and we got a really bad homeless situation. <laughs> oh, this is it's horrible. Know. It's horrible. Oh yeah, you know I got I got the homeless cousins because they don't leave in the other house. So, and <laughs> you know I'm Mexican. We got big families, man. Well, you know if my husband pissed me off. He's gonna be homeless real soon. You know, no, I love. No, him. no, he, your, your husband's white. He's uh we like to call the co-signer. Ah. Uh, uh, <laughs> I love yeah, that you, one. You got, you yeah, you got a co-signer. Yeah, you got, that's a keeper. That's why she's all like, you know, she's all like, I'm going to marry him. I'm going to marry him. 
husband. Oh, he was so hot. He was so hot. I was still in love with my husband like the first day. Okay, it's speaking funny. of being hot, um, so, okay, because I'm trying yeah, to... Yeah, we're going to talk I'm, about me now? Yeah, I want to talk, talk about you because you guys got to hear the story. So, But I'm, I'm trying to do the timeline because you start dancing at 15. Uh-huh. You dance with your partner for 30... 36. And then you start doing comedy. Well, no, no, no. I started doing comedy in between before I quit the, the dancing for complete. Okay. You know what I mean? So, yeah, no, no, no. I danced with him. When I started doing comedy, I was still dancing. Okay. And uh, my husband and I, which already started dating after we met there, I moved to LA, right? And I started mm -hmm. doing comedy at the comedy store. Mitzi Shore mm -hmm. said, you're going to be the next Rosanne Bar. She said I was going to be, she, she was the one that used to discover all the comedians. Yeah, yeah. And, so and she gave me my own show in the main room at the comedy store. Wow. So I will come from Utah to the comedy store and I will do the show here. And then my husband and I, which we were not husband and wife yeah. yet, the boyfriend and girlfriend, we would drive back to Utah. And then I would dance yes. with my dance partner there in Utah. Wow. So no, I was still dancing when I started doing the comedy thing. So when you yeah. met me, I was still a dancer, but nobody oh, wow. knew. Okay, well the reason that I'm trying to do the timeline is because, um, you know, we're not supposed to ask how old you are, you're a lady, and I'm not supposed to ask you that. And, 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 and I know you're a little bit older than me, you know. Uh, but I'm uh, very proud of my age. No, 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 that's good, that's good. You know what, I'm a father now, you know, my son's three years old, and yeah. before he was born, I, was, I wasn't, ashamed of my age, you know, nothing to be ashamed of, but I wasn't proud, you know, because I'm, you know, I'm getting older, and I was, you know, I was like, oh, I'm getting older, life sucks, or whatever, but now that I'm a father, I enjoy my age, because, you know, I, I got, like, my son, that's my, my you know, my, my happy ending, that's, that's like, you know, I got my son, uh, uh, I, I love being a dad, you know, and, and you yes. know, I'm happy, yeah, I, I, I love you the age You guys are the cutest together, oh, I gotta tell you. you. I watch Appreciate all your stuff on, on, uh, on uh, Facebook of you and him, Every time, oh, oh my God, it, it kills me. Thank you. He dressed him up as Elvis for Halloween. I uh, was he was, he was a bad as Elvis. Oh. Yeah, he did the little dance, and everything. He's like Elvis. He did a shimmy. He was he was awesome. But <laughs> enough about him, because I want to get to you, because I want to talk about this story. So um, the reason I you know want to ask your your age is because uh, we have uh, we had a mutual friend, Marilyn Martinez, who is uh, one of the most big-hearted most nicest and most hilarious female comics I have ever met in my life who passed away and we were trying to find out we were talking about you know, how long ago exactly it's about between eight to ten years ago yeah all right so we had like a, a, a like a viewing for her at the comedy store all right which you know I'm, I'm you know I've been there I performed there her eulogy, yeah her yeah. eulogy I, yeah. I've never I've never been like you know a regular there but you know I do go in there and I sometimes and hang out whatever but you were a regular and you did something that blew about my mind and 300 other people that were there. And we were shocked because I knew you were an older woman and you did something and I was just like, wow, that's amazing. So I'm gonna let you take it from here because that's your story. So you gotta say this. Okay. I was really like, hey, I ain't gonna lie. You know, I used to see your shows and stuff like that. Oh, Ludo's cool, Ludo's cool. And you did that I was, for, for, for like a quick minute. I was like, I wanna do Ludo, you know? I was just like, wow, Ludo's hot, you know? So why don't you, you know, Dave, no disrespect, I'm just saying your wife blew everybody's mind that night. So why don't you tell them what you did? Oh my God, oh my God. Okay, so what happened was Marilyn Martina, you know, we're having her eulogy, and, um, and something happened in the room that it got really, really uptight, and, and I said, oh, the only way we're gonna get rid of this bad energy in this room is if somebody oh, gets naked. Yeah, there was almost the uh, altercation between yes, two people. Between yeah. two comedians, exactly. Yeah. So then my friend goes, oh, you're gonna get naked? And I was like, no. And she goes, Wait. I said, you get naked. She goes, no, you get naked. I was like, okay. So anyway, so. Look, real quick, real quick. Uh, without saying names, the comic she was talking about when she told me that story, for a second I was like, oh, I wish it was her instead. You know? <laughs> <laughs> but, but after I saw what I saw, you know, I was like, you know what? I'm glad it was you. You know, thumbs up, baby, thumbs up. You know. So, so, so anyway, so then I, uh, she goes, you, you're gonna do it. I was like, okay. So, I had this long black coat on, and we're sitting in the middle of 350 people, 400 yeah. people. I don't know. And I just started going like this, and I started taking my clothes off underneath my coat in the middle of everybody, and nobody is seeing anything. But you know, I was a dancer, so of course I know how to get naked without, you know. 
knowing that I'm getting naked. So anyway, so I take all my clothes off and then I wrapped her around and I give it to her and I said, you hold this. And then she goes, okay, introduce Lulu right now, introduce Lulu right now. So I went on stage and uh, what's happened is that this girl, her whole theme on her comedy was about making a memory. Memory. So I talk about Marilyn Martinez. Marilyn yeah. Martinez. So she made, uh, not to cut you off, she made a lot of memories and uh, she's a beautiful woman and, and a lot of comments were taking turns speaking and so you were one of the ones that went so up there. So this is my turn and they introduced me and I went up and I had a beautiful poem on my pocket and I read the poem and then after the poem I said and now in honor of Marilyn Martinez, M Martinez I would like to make a memory. And what happened was that I took my coat and I went like this and I opened my coat and I was completely naked. Nothing. The room went silent, mouths dropped, nobody can believe it. Cause you know, Lulu, like she's never been, you know, even though her act, she does like a sexy dance and stuff like that. She's never been like that type of comic where, you know, she dresses very pro provocative or anything like that. And you know, I was a young comic at the time and all of us were like, oh snap, you know? And it was, it was a hell of a memory. Oh, it was a memory, it was a memory. And well, my favorite part was the one thing I was nervous about was the photographer. This is a photographer there taking pictures of everybody, and he's always admired my body. And Schwartz, and Michael, yeah, Michael Schwartz. Michael Schwartz. He always admired my body, and uh, you know, and in that moment, I thought, oh, he's gonna take a picture. Oh, he's gonna take a picture. He's gonna take a picture. So he goes like this, and, and he sees me get naked, and he goes. Mouths dropped, people. Uh, and then he looked to everybody screaming because the whole room started screaming. And then when he went like this to take a picture again, I took my coat and I went like a dancer that I was. <laughs> and I walk away. So nobody got to take a picture. And I'm going, damn. Baby. You got lucky. God, I would have loved to have a picture of that. That, that would have been a good picture. Though. That would have been an awesome picture. Right? Because I, mean, I mean, the way you posed and then you were on stage and the lighting and everything, you know, she looked like she had this like, banging body, well you did, you had a nice body. Thank so, you, I still, I still have I gotta it. talk a little shit, because I forgot because I'm like, okay, so her body doesn't age, just the face. <laughs> just the face, baby. Just the hair, I don't know what I no, oh my no, God. But, but, Okay, so I was glad I was there. But what I really wanted to be at was <clears throat> when you had to tell your husband what you did. Because oh. you know he was gonna hear about it. Oh my God. You know he was gonna hear oh, about yeah, it. No, so I, I wanna know that story. Oh, so then, we're, we're driving home, and I, I was with four other comedians, all the girls, and I said, okay, girls, so you guys are coming up with me so I can tell this what happened to my husband, right? They're like, oh, no. We're not going to go up See, with you. See, smart. No, they yeah, smart. You know, and I'm like, oh, you bitches, come on. you got to come up with me. They decided no, okay? So they drove me up, and they leave. So now I go home, and I'm like, um, um, baby, um, and she goes, how was everything? And I go, oh baby, it was beautiful. And uh, you know, I created a memory for Marilyn. He goes, oh, how great, what did you do? I was like, well, um, um, so I then I tell him the story, right? And my beautiful husband, this is why I love this man. This is why I married this guy. He goes, this bump. Yes, and I was like, that's my man, you know? Oh, that's awesome. So, yeah, no, it, was, it, was, it was a beautiful experience. And you know what I love about that? You guys after that. Nobody say, hi, Ludo, how are you? No, they will go on their knees as they go. <laughs> yeah, all of us, as soon as we see Ludo the next time, we are like, oh, damn, you know, we're not worthy. I mean, uh, uh, yeah, you know, that was a, uh, uh, it, was, it was a great memory. It's a memory, it's people still talking about it. Yeah, too, yeah, you know, because, you know, well, the thing is. It was on the paper, too. They mentioned they? it on the paper. Yes, they say the actress, comedian Ludovica make a memory on her own for Marilyn Martinez. Oh, wow. It was on the newspaper. No picture, damn. We should have stayed there longer. Ah! But back, back then, you know, uh, I had a Nokia phone, you know, the camera sucked, <laughs> you know, it was just like a one-inch screen. Uh, and then you have a, if you didn't have a camera, you know, I was, I was hoping I'd hear a lot of, you know, that little, you know. Everybody just freaked out so hard. They just started screaming. I mean, one thing is to go topless or whatever, but I went yeah, all the way. Yeah, you went full monkey. You can see the mohawk and everything. Yeah, it was it was great. Yeah, you know, yeah, it was awesome. It was awesome. You know, like <laughs> for us young comics, we were like, oh, you know, I'm like, you know, you know, I was all like, I'm gonna come here every week. You know, 
see what who's doing it this week you know that was, that was awesome though uh, and you know what the funny thing is to like this comedian he was in alaska at the time i can't remember uh, and he go he comes and look at me he goes i heard what you did i go you were in alaska he goes i knew two minutes later oh yeah you know what that's too good i'm not gonna lie one thing is comics we be snitching on everything, you know, like, you know, they're like, comics are like informants, you know, you, they, they'll let you know the the, 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 the 411 and everything, and that, as soon as you did it, I saw a couple of guys texting, texting. like, like oh, oh, Ludo did this, Ludo God. did that, oh, that was an awesome memory, oh, so, you word. know, so anyways, uh, hey, thank you for telling us a little bit about yourself, your stories, um, let people know where they can uh, find you at, Well, social media, I am on Facebook, my name is spelled L-U-D-O, space, capital V-I-K-A. It's Ludovica, but it's Ludovica. <laughs> and uh, my, <laughs> my website, ludovica.com. Uh, uh, that means dot com. Dot com, yes. <laughs> and uh, what else? You can find me at home, you know, with my husband, you know. And you can find me on your shows. Yes, uh, I, uh, I've said it before, I produce a lot of shows and I use Ludo a lot. And, and uh, we actually drove here uh, because, uh, you know, sometimes we have car problems and she's having car problems, so I picked her up and I booked her for two shows on the way here, so. Yeah. Um, Careful with the Volkswagen Jettas, okay? Uh, <laughs> yeah. So, uh, March 22nd, uh, I'm having a birthday show in San Pedro at uh, Babush Moroccan Restaurant. Uh, it's a new venue that I started. And I asked you to be on the show, but I know you got something on Thursday to do acting or something like that. Like yeah, but class, I'm going to try to She said she might try to make it. But April 28th, we're going to be in Lancaster at Gino's Restaurant, which is an awesome show. My boy DJ Q-Ball and my boy uh, DJ Episode produced that, you know, along with me. You know, they're, they're the promoters. And we have about 200, 250 people every show. It's awesome. Ludovica is going to be one of the comics. Uh, you can add me again on social media, Instagram, Twitter, Snapchat, uh, Benny Mena. Uh, uh, capital B E N Y, capital M E N A, and uh, look us yeah. up. And and you know what else too? I'm doing this tour thing I told you about, uh, the Me Too comedy tour. Look for it, Me Too comedy tour coming up. I, and, uh, <laughs> so the thing about the Me Too thing, they should have called it instead of like hashtag It happened to me, because because no like for example I got I got a buddy that that uh, on Instagram he posted like Hey I'm going to go to Vegas who's down to go. And now these guys put like, hashtag I want to go, hashtag I want to go. So I put hashtag me too, you know? <laughs> and, and I didn't think about what I did. And then somebody goes, what do you mean me too? I'm like, yeah, I want to go to Vegas, you know? And, and they're like, no, man, me too. And I was like, oh, so it should have been, it should have been called something else. Like, yeah. hashtag it happened to but, me. Or, but, you know. but let me tell you something. I know a lot of people are going to think that we're going to trash men because what's happening. No, this is going to be the contrary. Me Too Comedy Tour is healing through laughter. So we're actually talking about this to get men and women together again. Because you know something, baby? We cannot live without you, guys. Okay? And we need each other to love each other. And that's my whole thing. Yeah, we it's like men. Keep the sex going on the relationship because, you know, it's very necessary. I think you're saying that. And, uh, yes, and keep it safe. Keep the sex safe, baby and uh, love each other and kiss each other and fuck each other a lot and <laughs> All right. be happy. And yeah, because you know, men can't live without women either. Exactly. We can, we'll be very happy, but only for a short time before it gets miserable again. Yeah, All right. you know, this is what God created us, you know, so we can yeah. love each other. Love each other and for men can work their asses off so you can be spoiled brats. That's like, that's like, anyways, uh, until next time, this is Off Stage with Benny Mena. Today my guest was a beautiful little Vika. See you guys later. Peace out. Ellie here. I am a singer and an actress. You guys can find all of my recent commercials and all the recent videos on all my social media, YouTube, Instagram, and Facebook. You guys can find me on Ellie and Ellie. You guys can listen to all of this on BTV, i3, and LDU Ponico Radio. If you don't want to fall immediately and immutably into love, look away. If you don't want to find yourself suddenly discontented, 
disconcerted, distracted, look away. If you don't want to be held against your will or bound to something, anything, like heat or want or hurt. If you don't want even a glimpse at where you always secretly suspected your life could lead. If you don't want to be seduced, then please, please, look away. Hi, I'm Jessie Martin. Join us every Tuesday from 5 to 6 on the Legacy Direct Show, where we have different guests and talk about different topics. Get to learn more about our friends right here on LP and Polico Radio. Don't miss it. When you look for things, when you search the polished showrooms, the markets, the runway shows, you are looking for me. Beyond luxury and status, beyond capability and utility, you are looking for me. And when you dream, when you dream of an SUV existing far beyond the ordinary, an SUV steeped in performance, infused with passion, artistic beyond description. You unknowingly dream of me. I am the end of your search, your drive, your dream. I am what you live for. I am the Alfa Romeo Stelvio, the first sport utility vehicle created by Alfa Romeo.